Hi guys, this is Joel Kennedy with Kennedy Violins, and I thought today I would just do as short a video as I can on the proper care and maintenance of your stringed instrument. Now I'm just going to cover three things today. Humidity, temperature control, how to clean your violin or string instrument, whatever it may be, and bridge maintenance. Okay, so first of all, cleaning your violin. So if you if you wipe down your instrument every day or every, every time you're done playing your instrument, then the rosin won't have a chance to build up in this area and make your instrument ugly. So if, if, you do, if, if you do have an instrument where it's been allowed to build up and it's getting all ugly, then you'll have to use cleaners. We'll cover that in another video. But let's just say you just have some rosin where you can just wipe it off. Um, so it's actually pretty simple. You want to use a nice soft cloth. Um, you know, of course, if you buy a Kennedy violin, you know, it comes with a cleaning cloth, a Kennedy violin's cleaning cloth. But it's just, this is microfiber. Um, but generally speaking, people will use uh, you know, it's just a soft cotton cloth. Here's a different kind. This is not microfiber. It's just a soft cotton cloth. So a washcloth will usually work. A handkerchief usually works. Um, T-shirt material. Just make sure it's nice and soft. And of course you want a, a cloth that doesn't shed, right? So it's, it's actually pretty simple. So the areas that you want to clean are going to be the strings, uh, right above the fingerboard, and then down here. Now this instrument, I left it pretty dirty on purpose so you could see. So after you're done playing it, every time, you just want to clean the strings and then go underneath the strings here on the fingerboard and it cleans right up. Same with the uh, area underneath the strings, right? And that's about it. Every time you're done playing your instrument, right before you put it in the case, just wipe that rosin off. And if you do that every time you're done playing, your violin will stay looking clean for years. Um, uh, what you want to make sure you don't do is don't use any kind of cleaners on it that are not meant specifically for string instrument. No furniture polish, water, keep all that stuff away from your instrument. You'll want to actually use stuff that's formulated specifically for a stringed instrument. Okay, so let's talk about air and temperature. Uh, well, string instruments are wood, obviously. They're very susceptible to temperature changes and humidity changes. What you really want to avoid is extreme changes. So uh, temperature changes that happen very rapidly or humidity changes that happen very rapidly. There are some very simple things that you can do to avoid that. Don't leave your car, uh, don't leave your instrument in a hot car. Don't leave your instrument in a cold car. Well, this, is a, this is probably the most common thing that people do. They'll leave it in the trunk, they'll leave it inside the car, the car gets over 100 degrees. We've literally here at Kennedy Violins had people come in with violins that have melted. The finish is melted. So you just just if you're going to go into a restaurant it's a hot summer day and you just got done with the rehearsal bring the instrument into the restaurant with you whatever you got to do but don't leave it in the car um, okay so we don't want to leave our instrument in front of a of a, a, um, a window right so a lot of times people's bedrooms they, they got a window or a sliding glass door the direct sunlight very bad uh, vents we have vents on this on our walls and our ceilings we have uh, little heaters space heaters you don't want your instrument anywhere near that so yeah, so as long as you avoid space heaters and vents and windows and leaving your instrument in uh, really hot or cold areas, you're probably going to be fine. Your instrument's going to be relatively stable. Regardless of the climate that you're in, you're probably not going to have too many issues. Okay, so let's move along to bridge maintenance. Now this is something that a lot of people don't know about, including a lot of professional players. So what happens is, as you're, every time you tune your instrument, the string is being pulled this direction. What that does is those, that, that little micro change in direction actually pulls the top part of your uh, bridge forward. And what, can, what that can do to your bridge over time is it actually can start to buckle your bridge at the hip. So once that bridge buckles and becomes warped, um, what that does is it, it prevents uh, the bridge from making proper contact with the top of your instrument and then your, the sound of your instrument will suffer greatly. Remember, all the, all the vibrations of these strings have to go through that bridge and be transmitted through that bridge to the top of your instrument to make that sounding box vibrate. So you want to have a really healthy bridge. You do not want it to be buckled. So uh, what I suggest is checking this bridge maybe once a month. You check it once a month, you make sure that this angle so look at the back of your bridge not not the front of your bridge here 
but look at the back of your bridge. Make sure the back of your bridge is at a 90 degree angle with the top of the instrument. Now you don't want to look at the face of the bridge because if your bridge is carved properly, there's an asymmetrical taper to it and it's never going to be, it's ne the, the bridge is always going to look like it's leaning back. A properly cut bridge will look like it's actually leaning back. So don't look at the front, you want to look at the back. Make sure that you've got that 90, 90 degree angle at the back of the bridge and the top of the instrument. So once a month, what you want to do is look at that. Now I'm going to I'm going to move this bridge so it's really off, okay? So you see how that bridge is leaning forward? Ah, that's terrible. So what you want to do is just gently, with your thumb and index finger, grab the top of the bridge and just move that back. Right? And then you just check it. And you want to look at that 90 degree angle, but you also want to look at the feet. Make sure there's no daylight underneath those feet. Now this is still leaning forward a bit. I can see a little bit of gap between the foot and the uh, top of the violin. So, move it back a little bit more, very carefully. Okay, okay, good. So now we have that 90 degree angle that we want, and we also have the bridge uh, contacting the top of the violin properly. So like I said, once a month you can check that. Now if you put brand new set of strings on, those strings are going to stretch, they're going to pull that bridge forward a lot. So you're going to have to, you know, check that bridge maybe a couple times a week until those, uh, maybe two or three times until that, uh, those strings are done stretching. But after the strings have stretched and it's all settled, I say about, yeah, once a month, check that bridge. And now if you do that, just make sure it's a nice straight up and down and your instrument will be, will, be, will be looking good for many, many years. Hope this video helps. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, you know, put them in the, you know, the comment section below, uh, or just feel free to contact Kennedy Violins. You know, we're all players and teachers. We're always happy to answer any kind of questions you have. Thanks. Oh, hey, just a, a little helpful tip, guys, on your bows. Um, you wanna make sure that every time you're done using your bow, you loosen it completely. Every time you put your bow away, you loosen it so the hair is touching uh, the, the stick because if you keep it tight it's going to warp your bow eventually and stretch out your hair and then your bow will be ruined. So make sure every time you put it away you loosen the bow. The other thing is is that when you t when you tighten your bow maybe make it about a pinky in the middle and no more. That's how pretty much how far you want to tighten your bow. Uh, and also after a, after a while or especially after you've put new rosin on just clean it off with your with the, your cleaning cloth that'll keep your bow looking really nice. Yeah, so just clean it, don't over tighten your bow, and make sure every time you put your bow away, just loosen it. Your bow will last a long time. Hope that helps.